praise the Lord. We are so grateful to God this day. I thank God for the opportunity and the privilege to today to minister to his children. While we wait for others to join us, I think this is the first live stream from the World Bride. This is the very first live stream from the World Bride. And I'm happy that you are all part of this live stream today. Before we continue, shall we have a word of prayer? Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you. We are so grateful, Lord. Our heart, Lord, is full of joy. Father, we know you have chosen us, Lord, before the foundation of the world, that we will bear and we will manifest your glory on the earth. Father, you have ordained us, O God, in Christ. Everything that comes to us in Christ, Lord, is for your own glory. We say thank you, Father. Father, as we approach this meeting, Lord, even this live stream, we invite your presence, Lord. We invite your presence, Lord. Father, we need your strength. We need your healing, Lord. We need your encouragement father we need your presence lord we need your grace lord even your everlasting grace that endureth forever we need your life oh god manifest yourself oh god in a peculiar way to that manifest yourself lord to your children lord speak through your servant oh god Father, speak healing and uprising, O oh Father, to your children, Lord. Speak healing, O oh God, and revival to your children, Father. Speak healing, O oh God, and joy to your children, Father. We say, thank you, Lord. As your word is coming forth, open our eyes to see you just as you are may i speak lord like an oracle father may i minister grace and strength to your children father thank you heavenly father for in jesus christ's name we pray amen god bless you all well today i'm going to be very very brief it's going to be a kind of summary of the seals. I hope you can hear also my sister. I hope you can hear. So today is going to be a summary. I'm on a transit, so I just stop by to make this broadcast. Once I'm done, I'll continue. Now, talking about the seals, we need to understand what the seals really means. We need to understand it. Now, this is very, very important. This is not like Pentecost. This is not like the impact realm. This is the truth and the whole truth. That is what the seals is all about. The seals is talking about a person that have come to tabernacle himself in you, his members of his own body. Now pay attention to this. Remember, after the seals, we have the trumpets. And the trumpet is a further walk 
if the seals is not well placed and understood you will you may not understand the trumpet also now the seals is completely the work of christ completely the work of christ in the first seal we see christ being born Praise be the name of the Lord. We see a church that was called out of the spirits. Now pay attention to this. Christ and the church are united to form an entity. Christ and the church are made one. And how is Christ and the church made one? How did the union come to be? Praise be the name of the Lord. Now pay attention to this. When Adam was formed, before Adam became a living soul, there was a descending, a descending of a life from a higher realm. Before the church come to the reality and to the realization of who they are, the voice of the seventh angel descended out of heaven unto her. When you see before the conception of Mary, before he conceived the man Jesus, there was the voice, a descending of the voice, the voice of the seventh angel descended to her. She received that voice and she said, Be it unto me according to your word. He received a word that brought about the fulfillment of the promise of God in her womb, in her body. It never matters where she was coming from is not important the name that was given to her if you find out the real meaning of the word mary mary is not a good name there is nothing good in the word mary but it does not matter the kind of name that was given to her a word was spoken to her and that word was not an ordinary word it's not like the word of the prophets of old it is the word of the prophet, but it's more than the word of the prophet. And what makes it more than the word of the prophet? Because the word was made alive. This word came to her with power. It came to her with a lot of fulfillment. It came to her with the, listen, it was like a thunder to her. The word made the word of the prophet alive and personal in her. Until Christ is personal to you, you have not yet started the journey with Christ. That is why Paul said there is a descending with a shout first. Remember when we spoke about the sounding of the trumpet we have not stopped that message this is a continuation of that message we go to a place where the voice is coming out of heaven the consequences of the seals is the continuation of the voice out of heaven they are the things that are going on in the realm of the spirits Until the word of God becomes personal to you, it will not be made alive. If the word of God continues to sound like an echoed voice, sound like a word spoken by another, 
sound like a mighty word that is written by a one mighty man, it will not be made alive. The word of God that is made our life personal, that you only look towards that word, not minding the other things surrounding you. Your eyes and focus is on the word. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. The voice of the seventh angel has been declaring the reality of God unto us. It behoves us to receive this voice and become one with this voice. The Lord wants to identify with your suffering. He wants to identify himself with you, not minding anything. Not minding where you are coming from. Not minding the name that you are currently bearing. Mary means bitterness. Not minding how bitter your life has been. The Lord wants to identify himself with you in your suffering. He wants to be made one with you. And that is the mystery. The mystery of creation. The mystery of man. And this mystery of man is not the mystery of the fallen man. It's the mystery of the new created man. In the fallen man, there is nothing. No life of God in the fallen man. But in the new created man, God identified himself in that man. Heaven and earth became one. Now we understand the mystery of the son of man. A man born of a woman. A man born of flesh and blood. A man that has all the weakness. The weakness in man. A, a man that has all the trials and temptation in man. In that man is all the promises of God. And the voice of the seventh angel has come to make us aware that we, in us, within us, is the kingdom of God. Everything that is of God is within us. The kingdom of God is within us. The life of God is within us. It does not matter what it looks like presently. It does not matter. It's not important how it looks like presently. What is important is the life that is inside of us. We see a man, Job. The Bible says Job was a man blessed among all the men of the East. What makes him a blessed man? There is a realization of the life that is inside of him. The Lord loved him. He is blessed of the Lord. And we have come to the realization of how blessed we are. It does not matter what we are going through in the outside world. Inside of us, the promises of God is made manifest. Job, a blessed man, so blessed among all the men of the East. He is so blessed because the Lord has predestinated him. The Lord has ordained all his steps. The Lord has taken charge of all his life. The Lord is all that he is. And the devil, the Lord asked the devil, have you noticed my servant, Job? Have you noticed him? 
You know what the enemy says? The enemy says you have built a hedge around him. Nothing can happen to him. You have built a hedge around him. And the Lord said, you are free to touch him, but don't touch his life. And what is that life? That life is the life of God that is within. Because the Lord knows that the more we are pressed, that life of God comes out. He knows. He knows what is inside of you. If you have not believed the account, the testimony of Christ, that the kingdom of God is within you, that inside of this man, this new man, there is goes through, the life of God will come out. No matter how you are pressed to hate, love will come out. No matter how you are pressed to despise, love will come out. No matter how you are pressed and pressed and pressed, only the life of God will come out. Many are going through different trials. When we look back, let your consolation be that the devil cannot touch the life of God inside of you. The devil cannot touch it. No matter what the devil does to this body, Job said, even though, he said, in this body, I will see my Redeemer. Even though my skin won't eat up this skin, in this body I will see my ready man. Even though sickness eats me up, even though trials eat me up, there is a life. There is a life that the devil cannot touch. There's a life that is inside of this new man. There's a life of this church of God. There are people who believe that they, though they are here, they are not part of this world. There are people who come to know and realize that they are born out of God. There are people who have come to realize that they are special. They are special. They are not special because of the bountiful things that is around them. They are not special because of the things that the eye can see. They are not special because of that. What makes them special is the life of God that is inside of them. They are special people. Is a new man. Is a new church. Is a church that knows that they are the son of man. And the son of man walketh the will of the spirits. Listen. Until we come to the realization that we are this new man, we are this church that is born out of the spirit, out of heaven. Listen, Revelation 12. Until we come to this realization, because it's only this church that has the life of God inside of her. Only this church has the life of God inside of her. Only this church has the seed of God inside of her. Only this church is conceived with that life. We enter into the seals. The first seal is revealing you. We have the righteousness of God. Oh my. It's not by my own righteousness. The white horse rider is by his righteousness. It's not by what you have done. It's by what he has done. It's not by my life. It's by his life. That is the thing that is covering us. That is the life that is covering us. That is our covering. The life of the Lamb. The Bible says, The Lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the sea. And when John was looking, he saw a Lamb. Remember, many, many believe the gospel, but not according to the truths, the way, and the life 
they believe in a half gospel. They believe in an impart revelation of Christ. They believe in the candlestick realm revelation of Christ. That is why the seals is not going on in the candlestick. It is happening in the realm of the spirits. And it's for those that are born in that spirit. They are those that are coming out of that spirit. That is why their kind of righteousness is temporal. In their righteousness, they believe so much, they think it's true. They believe that the grace of God appears for some time. And after some time, the grace elapses. And when the grace elapses, there is going to be a time of judgment and so many things. Listen, that is what their covering is. It's a fig covering. It is only last for a while. It's fig. This church has put on not fig. They have put on Christ. They have put on the Son. They don't put on fig. They have put on Christ. They have put on life. They have all that they are have been paid for. And this covering, this grace that they have put on, can take them forever until Christ is made manifest. The Bible says, as many that received him, to them that is given the power to become the sons of God. The Bible says, as many that believe him, he, they have a life, an age-changing life, eternal life, a transforming life, a life that changes from glory to glory. That is the life that we have received. That is the life that this son, this life of the Lamb, will make manifest unto us. Glory to God. Listen. Before Jesus Christ died and was buried, there was life inside of him. He was life riding upon this life. Paul said, if mortality Put on immortality. Mortality is a higher life. It will be swallowed up in victory. So we are putting on the life of Christ. We are putting on the righteousness of Christ. We are putting on everything that is of Christ. We have the life, the seed of Christ inside of us. We are bringing forth his life. So no matter what we are going through, no matter what we go through, it is his life that will come out. Because many have not put on Christ. They have put on religion. When little trial come, what happened? They were abandoned. They say, we don't know that this is how Christianity is. They will throw it away. And they turn and become something else. Because it's religion. It is only temporary. They just have a temporary grace. A temporary grace will bear the sons of God maybe for 10 years. After 10 years, when something higher comes upon them, they will give up. Paul said, if this mortal will put on immortality, and that is what we are putting on, his life, his life is our life. Oh, though we are born of an earthly mother and of an earthly father, but our life is coming from above. The source of our life is coming from above. And the father, the creator of everything, the Lord of glory, has identified himself with us. I'm so glad the father has become me. He identify in my suffering. He identify in your suffering. In whatever you are going through. The Father has identified himself in the same way. You are not alone in this life. You are not alone. You are not alone. He's with you. 
in every step he's with you we need to be conscious of that we need to be conscious of that in every step of the way he is with you he's there because the world has become man the world has become flesh many don't understand what it means for the world to become flesh man is weak the world has taken weakness so that he will consume your weakness and bring his strength that's what the bible says let the weak say i am strong it says my strength is made perfect in your weakness he has identified himself with you the world has become man the world has been made human the world has been made flesh so that the world can be brought forth out of you out of me that is the first seal. The devil will tell you, you, you have done this, you have done that. Brother, there is no more condemnation. No more condemnation. We are riding on his righteousness. We are riding on his strength. We are riding on his victory. There is no failure in the ones that are in Christ. No matter what they are going through, they are victorious. We are riding on his life, not our life. That is the first seal. That is what the first seal is. And the Bible says, come and see. The voice of life is pointing it to you. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Let that voice, let that life begin to come forth from you. Because the world has become you. That is you. Come and see. In the first part, we explain what come and see means. It's not come, move. No, it is a manifestation. It's a life. It is an unveiling. Come and see. Let this life begin to manifest in you. That life has become you. That life has become flesh. As you are walking down and listening to this voice, the word has become flesh. You are the new man. There are new men that are walking the streets of America, the streets of Austria. The streets of Nigeria. New men. Inside of those men is the life of God. Listen. This is more, much more than Pentecost. Pentecost is feeling. We are not talking about feeling. It does not matter how you feel. The enemy may want you to feel unhappy. It's not your feeling. It's not your emotion. It's his life. It's his feeling. It's everything about him. Pentecost is his emotion. Until you speak in tongues, you don't believe you have it. This is not talking about having it. This is not talking of anything. It's talking of you being it. It's much more than that. It is a feast that is going on in the realm of the spirit. It is a revealing that is going on in the realm of the spirit. Pentecost will tell you, until you are baptized into water, you come out, you have not received it. It's not talking about water. It will tell you, until you partake of any man-made ritual, you have not gotten it. He's not talking about it. He's telling you, is you. You are him. The world has become flesh. You are a new man. You are a new body. A new church. The church of the living God. The church that is born out of the realm of the spirits. It has nothing to do with feeling. It has nothing to do with feeling. It has nothing to do with weakness. It has nothing to do with failure. It has nothing to do with all that is in man. 
Listen. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he taught it not robbery to be equal with God. He taught it not robbery. He know he's a man. He thought he recognized his weakness. He know inside of him is the life of the Father. He recognized his weakness. And the Bible says he humbled himself. Walking on the shores of this earth are men who will humble themselves. Men who will bow to the leadership of the spirits. Listen, this is much more than preaching. This is much more than teaching. What is going on in the realm of the spirit, in the If you don't have it, you can't give it. The Lord is raising up an army, an army that are built in Christ, in the Spirit, that trust in the Spirit. The army out of the realm of the Spirit, out of heaven, and you are that army. He took us from the first seal. He made us to understand that the battle has begun. He made us to understand that we are not just born of flesh and blood. We are born of God. Listen. If you think you are born of the flesh of flesh and blood, then the life of God is not in you. Because Flesh and blood cannot inherit. That inheritance is talking about life. It's talking about life. I'm going to be brief. Just brief. By the grace of God, next week, we we'll hit it hard. There is nothing in rushing we're not running anywhere we are taking it listen when we are done with the seals you must be that seal and you must be the revelation of christ it must be a life it's not just preaching it's not just teaching it's much more than that when the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected, do you know what he told them? He said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. There is something about that. There was a teaching that is much more than what they received. Why he has not resurrected. It is the voice that is coming out of the resurrected Christ. It's much more than a teaching. It's much more than a preaching. It's an importation. It's life. I'm going to be brief so that I continue with my journey. Next week, we are going to deal with this. Listen, it doesn't matter. Shaking can come and go. Do you know what happens? There is a life that is coming out that is being born out. A new life is coming out. So it doesn't matter. We have entered our seals. We are riding in his strengths. We are riding in his righteousness. We are riding in his life. We are the son of man. Of that new creation. We are riding of everything that is of his. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by his spirit. If his spirit has not become flesh, if his word has not become flesh, you have not begun. The journey has not begun. The journey has not begun. Now we have started that journey with him. Listen. We are going to walk with him until self is completely swallowed up. That was what happened to Enoch. The Bible says, Enoch 
walked with God and Enoch was no more. Man was no more. A new man was born. Enoch put on immortality until mortality was completely swallowed up in him. Beloved, let this mind be in you. Let this life be in you. Let his victory be your victory. Let his life be your life. Let everything that is his be yours. You have come to the point Jesus came to. You have come to the mind that was in Jesus. Let that same mind be in you. Let that consciousness be in you. Let that life be in you. Let that mindset, let that mindset be in you. I am no more the first man. The generation of Christ has begun. Do you know what it's going to do? It will bring you to a place where that life will begin to burn every life that is not of his life bring you to that place it will bring you to the place where what you think you knew before is being darkened completely darkened next week we'll talk more about it god bless you all continue to pray for one another your nobody is your enemy your brother is not your enemy your sister is not your enemy nobody is your enemy we are brothers and we are sisters. Continue to pray for one another. God bless you all. We meet again on Saturday. Don't forget, Saturday is the seed of victory, part two. Don't miss it. It's a new thing that the Lord is doing. Don't miss it. This is new. It's completely new. Don't miss it. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word that has come forth. A word of encouragement to our heart, Lord. A word of remembrance, Lord. Remembering us and bringing our minds to what we were before the foundation of the world. Father, let this word of victory continue to make us victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. Let not our trials swallow us up. Let not what we are passing through swallow up. Father, let a new man be born out of every trial that we go through, Lord. Bless everyone, Father. Bless these wonderful women, O oh God. Bless these wonderful brothers and sisters, O oh God. Bless them, O oh God, exceedingly, Father. As many, O oh God, that desire healing, Father, heal them. Completely healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal them completely, Father. Heal them, O oh God. Put the testimony of the devil to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. God bless you all. God bless you.